Welcome to your first practical session. As a backend engineer using JavaScript, one of the best ways to run JavaScript is by using Node.js. I will show you how you can run JavaScript on your browser and I will also show you why you need Node.js. Let's get started. From a simple Google search, I was able to get Node.js.org you can simply navigate to this website using the URL. Node.js is currently being downloaded. If you are also running this using a Windows or a Linux machine, you will definitely follow the same process. Now I have Node.js installed. The next thing I will do is to verify if Node.js was successfully installed on my laptop. I'm going to quickly open up the terminal Let's clear this and let's make sure this is bold enough. Now I'm going to run a simple command. If you're currently using a Windows machine, you will probably open up your start menu and search for the command prompt or PowerShell. I would also show you an alternative to use so that you all can use the same terminal whether you are on a Linux, Mac or Windows machine. First off, Let's go ahead and type in node-v. This would verify that I have Node.js installed. I'm currently running the previous version because I did not install the new version I downloaded, but I will also show you how to upgrade or downgrade this in a later class. I use the clear command to clear what I have on the terminal. If you are on a Windows machine, I believe you can run CLS to do so. I'm simply going to search for hyper And I'm going to open the hyper.is. Now that I have this open, what I would advise you to do is to download for the Intel chip for those of you using a MacBook running with the Intel chip. If you're using a MacBook running on the Apple chip, you can go ahead with this option. If you're currently using a Windows machine or a Linux machine, you will also see the, the download options for the operating systems respectively. One last alternative is to go ahead and use the git bash and this will be my recommendation for those of you working with a Windows machine. Go ahead and search for git bash and download the version for your operating system right from this section. If you are using a Windows machine, click on Windows. If you are using a Mac machine, click on Mac OS. And if you are using a Linux machine, click on Linux. Let's go ahead and show you how to set up a basic project and run a sample JavaScript code. I believe you already downloaded VS Code. I would go ahead and open up VS Code. If you have not done that, please check the previous video. Now that I currently have Visual Studio open, the next thing I'm going to do is to ensure that this is bold enough for you to see. I'm going to explain some of the various parts of Visual Studio in the next session. Now that we've been able to open our Visual Studio Code environment, let's go ahead and talk about some of the basic sections in Visual Studio Code. First, we have the Explorer. Basically, this is where your folders and files are displayed as you create them or as you load them up in Visual Studio Code. Next, we have Search. This is how you perform search operations within a particular file or within a directory in Visual Studio Code. Next is for Source Control or Version Control. And basically, this is active when you have a source control or a version control system in your project. We'll get to that shortly. You have the run and debug section, which is responsible for giving you details about your debug operations while working on a project. Next, you have extensions. Visual Studio Code is very robust. You can download multiple extensions and make your workflows even easier. You can download extensions for running your JavaScript files. You can download extensions to aid faster operations. We would use a couple of extensions as we proceed through the lecture. As you can see, we don't have any file or folder opened in our Explorer. Let's go ahead and create a new file. If you're using a Windows machine, you will definitely see the menu bar at the top here, similar to what I have now.
I have created a new file and as you can see the file is currently named untitled1. This is because we have not saved the file and we have not set a location for the file. The next thing I'm going to do is to go to the file menu once again and click on save. Now it's going to ask us for the name of the file and also the location of the file. Let's call this file app.js. JS is the JavaScript extension. Any JavaScript file should definitely be saved with the .js. Every file has extensions and basically what you have here is a file name, what you have here is a file extension. This automatically shows that you are about to create a JavaScript file. Next is tags, but of course this would only show up on a MacBook and it's not relevant. And finally, you have to set a location for your file. Let's go ahead and save this file on the desktop. Now we have our file saved on the desktop. As you can see, our file is not displayed on the explorer. That is because the explorer actually opens up files that are found within folders, which means our file has to be within a folder. Now our file currently is on the desktop, which means it's currently under the desktop folder. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to close Visual Studio Code and I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio Code by simply creating a new folder, calling this code, calling this JavaScript. I'm going to move the app.js file into the folder. I'm going to drag this folder into Visual Studio Code. As you can see, we have app.js under the JavaScript folder opened right inside the Visual Studio Code environment. Now we can start off by writing a few lines of code. I am going to save this. Next, I'm going to create a very simple HTML file. I understand we are not using HTML. Basically, JavaScript is built to run on the browser. I'm going to show you how to run JavaScript first on the browser. And next, I'm going to show you how to run JavaScript with Node. I am going to save this file with the shortcut Ctrl S or I can simply go to file and click on save. Now I have this file saved under the JavaScript folder, which means we can also verify. As you can see, we have the HTML and the app file saved in the same location. Next, we have console.log, which is a very simple way to print a value in JavaScript. And I'm going to show you how you can verify if this works. Let's go ahead and open this up in our browser. Now we have this HTML file opened up in our browser. Of course, as you can see, we don't have anything displayed here. Let's go ahead and right click on our browser. I want you to click on inspect. Now I want you to go to console. As you can see, we have hello world printed right here. This shows that our JavaScript file is connected to this page and we can test or run multiple codes in here. The next thing we're going to do is to run our JavaScript code using Node. We have to first open up our terminal right here in VS Code. Let's go ahead and click on View and next we'll click on Terminal or you can follow this shortcut. The shortcut you see here will be based on your operating system. So go ahead and check for that shortcut and I would advise you learn how to use shortcuts because that would make your workflow even faster. Now that we have our terminal open, as you can see, our terminal is currently opened in our working directory, which is desktop slash JavaScript, which was the exact name of the folder we created. The next thing I'm going to do is to execute this file, which is app.js using node. Once again, I'm going to verify if node is installed. As you can see, node is currently installed. I am quickly going to run node app.js. Now I am executing this file 
app.js using node. Let's test and see if this is working. This is our current output, just as we saw in our browser. As you can see, node.js is currently functional and we are able to execute the app.js file right within our Visual Studio Code environment. Let's go ahead and begin with a basic introductory course to JavaScript. Of course, in the previous session, we explained the idea behind JavaScript. What we're going to do in this session is to start programming with JavaScript. Now that we have our file created, we're going to cover a few things in JavaScript. Let's delete the HTML file as we no longer need this. Let us create a file. We're going to call this txt stands for text. We're going to be covering the basic JavaScript syntax, variables, data types, number, numeric separator, boolean, string, objects, and arrays. Let's start off with syntax. Well, the syntax for any language basically describes the statements, identifiers, comments, expressions, and keywords used in writing your code within that specific language. Let's start off by understanding a few concepts. Basically, a simple statement in JavaScript is terminated by an optional semicolon. A white space has no effect except the white space is found within a string. I will get to explain what a string is shortly. A JavaScript statement, a JavaScript statement will be validated by JavaScript to ensure that the block of code is correct before execution. A comment will not be executed by JavaScript. Examples of comments are what we have currently. I will also get to this very shortly. This is an example of a comment. As you can see, this is currently shown in green because we're currently using the default team in the Visual Studio Code environment. This would not be executed by JavaScript because it has no effect on your code. We have multiple types of comments. This is a single line comment. And this is a multi line comment. They both serve the purpose of leaving descriptions to specific functionalities within your code. It has no effect on your code, it's just a way to describe a certain portion of your code while working on projects. Let's go ahead and move on to variables. Basically, a variable is a virtual container that holds values. An example of a variable, we say let a equals 10. This is to say that wherever you see a, the value is 10. What do we mean by let? Now basically, there are multiple ways to declare variables in JavaScript. What we've been able to do is declare three variables in three different ways. These are keywords. The first we use the var keyword, second we use the let keyword, and the third we use the const keyword. What are keywords? Keywords are programming language constructs used in creating the JavaScript statements. What is the difference between var and let? Basically, the let keyword is blocked scoped and the var keyword is function scoped. Also, 
The let keyword does not allow redeclaration of variables, but the var keyword allows redeclaration of variables. We'll talk about this in a later time, but for best practices, it is advised to work with the let keyword. We have what we call variable initialization, which is a way to initialize your variable after creating the variable. Now we have let a equals John. This is to say we have initialized the value of a to be John. When I over on here, you see we have string because this is what we call a string. A string is a collection of characters bounded in a quote. It can be single quote, double quote, or even or even using a backtick. Let's go ahead and explain this better. We're going to say let a1 equals John. Let a2 equals John. This is valid JavaScript. If we go ahead and print this on our terminal, you see we have John printed on the terminal. Now we've created a variable with the username and the value of John Doe. At this point, we call that variable username and change the value to John Mary. When we print this to the console, you can see that the result was John Mary, basically because we've altered the value right at this point. If we had used the const keyword, which means constant, this value would not be reinitialized. Now we get an error. We get an error because, as you can see, we are trying to assign a new value to a constant variable. Whenever you try to create a value that has to be constant, which means it will never be changed in your code base, it is ideal that you use the const keyword. Two basic types of data. We have the primitive types and the complex type. The primitive type is made up of null, undefined, boolean, number, big int, string, and symbol, while the complex type consists of the JavaScript objects. We'll get to this in a more detailed tutorial. Let's kick off by understanding some of the basic types, such as number and string. We can simply say let pi equals 150. In order to define a string, we can simply say let username equals John Doe. Now we've been able to declare a variable with type string and a variable with type of number. We can also go ahead to declare a variable called is complete. Now we've been able to create a boolean type. Boolean simply stands for true or false value, which means you can use this as a condition to check or perform any other complex operations. We would get to that in a bit. Now we've been able to create Now we've been able to create a number type, a string type, and a boolean type. Let's go ahead and print the types of these variables in the terminal. As you can see, we, we get number, string, and boolean. We are able to get the types because we are using the type of operator to check for the specific types of the variables. Now, let's go ahead and try out the undefined type. Basically, when we create a variable without initializing it, we end up making this undefined. If we go ahead and test this, As you can see, the type of the person variable is undefined. This is because this was not initialized. Let's initialize this to true. 
which is a boolean type now you can see we have the boolean type let's change it to a string as you can see we have the string type and finally a number as you can see we have the number type what if we append dot five to the number as you can see we still have a number type basically when you have decimal numbers or whole numbers you are still working with javascript number type now we've created a variable user and we've assigned null to this user. Let's go ahead and print. As you can see, we have null. The null type is an object, but it still serves as undefined. This can be very confusing to a lot of developers. When we say null, we are checking both the type and the value. If we go ahead and run this with the two equal sign, you see that this is equivalent to true. We will explain this in a later video and we'll make sure you understand this better. Let's talk about the NAN or NAN type. Basically, this is what you get when you try to perform operations with numbers and invalid number types. A quick example. We have A, which has the value of user. We have B, which has the value of 2. As you can see, A is a string and B is a number. Now we are saying A divided by B. Now we get not a number. Not a number meaning we are trying to divide a string by a number. This is mathematically incorrect and of course we get the feedback that this is not a number. Sometimes you end up having issues working with statements that has single quotes or double quotes. I am going to show you how to solve that kind of problem. So let's say we have let statements this is a very simple statement saying I am going to the lecture hall what if we decide to change this of course this works perfectly the reason for this is because we have the double quote and the single quote inside let's try another example As you can see, we have an error. You cannot use the single quote and the single quote in here except you put in the forward slash. Now with the forward slash, you are able to tell JavaScript that this is a continuation of the previous string statement. Another problem you might encounter is trying to have a double, a double quote within your string. Let's, try, let's assume this. One thing you could do is have the single quote outside or you can also have double quotes with the forward slash. This is valid. As you can see, I was able to run every single, I was able to to add every single value in one statement in one I was able to console log every single variable in a single console log statement of course this your result would be compact this way you can decide to separate this if you want to and then you have it in three separate lines so most times it's used for conditionals but 
The boolean operator can also be used for basic type conversions. Let's assume we have let's assume we have a value a to be zero, and we're trying to verify if a has a value. The next thing we might want to do is to say console.log boolean of a. Now this says false. That is because a is equal to zero. If we have any value greater or equal to one, you can see that a is equals true. Likewise, if we have an empty string, a would definitely be false. But when we have a value in here, a would definitely be true. This can also be applied to objects. We've not touched on objects, and that's what we'll do next. Let's go ahead and move over to objects. In JavaScript do not have a literal form, meaning we can say let a equals a symbol of one. We can say b. Let's go ahead and print the values of a and b. We are also going to see the types of A and B. As you can see, it comes out with the value attached symbol. What does this mean? This means you can actually have a value A And the value b with the same you can have a and b with the same values but as you can see the result we get from here is false even though we have same value for a and b it will never be the same because they both denote different symbols. We'll talk about this in a better class, especially when we start working with objects, you would see the benefit of working with symbols. Big hints represent extremely large numbers. We're going to try out a simple example here. As you can see, this is a very large number and this value equates to big int. If we have simple numbers such as 150, of course this is a number in JavaScript. Objects. An object in JavaScript is a collection of properties and every property can be defined as a key value pair. Here is a quick example. To declare an object, we use the open and close braces and within that object, we can have multiple properties and these properties are key and value pairs such as name, gender, age, location, Now we have an error and this is because we forgot to add the comma sign here. One other thing you can do is to declare a variable such as id with a value of 1. In here you can have id to be 1 or id. As a matter of fact, leaving it this way would equate to the value you have up here. Let's go ahead and log our value to the console or to the terminal. As you can see, we have ID, name, gender, age, and location. As we progress with the course, you will see other benefits of working with objects in JavaScript. Defining better numbers in JavaScript. 
let's assume we have a constant value called ROA and the value for ROA is equivalent to a million of course this is a good way to represent numbers and this is the this is the standard way to represent your values one thing you could do is make this more readable using the underscore this is valid JavaScript now we can also have BA as 2 million of course we are, we are not working with the mathematical operators yet and we are going to get there very soon but this is this is just a way to add both values as you can see we have the value of 3 million or that list of values and each value is an element specified by an index an example of a javascript array As you can see, our array contains a collection of objects or data types. As you can see, our array contains a combination of strings, numbers, and Boolean values. Let's see if this is valued. This is valid in JavaScript. In order to get the first value from your array, you have to call with the square brackets attached with the position or the index. Most programming language array index starts from zero. This would give us the first item in the array. This would give us the second item in the array. This would give us the fourth item in the array. of ways to initialize new arrays and objects are to use the constructors basically i'll show you an example on how to do that when it comes to working with arrays we can say let new array equals new array now we can say new array one equals hello new array zero equals math new array 2 equals 38 now we can go ahead and print the new array variable as you can see we have math hello 38 we're able to create a new array using the array constructor using the new keyword this is another way to create arrays in JavaScript. You can also create arrays using you can also create arrays using this pattern. One, two, and three. As you can see, we have one, two, and three. We can also create a third array with a size. Now we have an array with five. We have an array with size five. Let's go ahead and add some values into this array. Now we have one, two, three, four, five. Let's go ahead and print this array. Now we have an array with five items. What happens when we append a new item? As you can see, the length is overwritten.
The initial example is one of the most used pattern of creating arrays. Where you have the square brackets with the values inside the square brackets. This is what you might find yourself using most times, but either of these options works, but either of these options are also fine. In the next class, we'll be covering operators and control flow statements. If you're already on the Discord server, ensure you're part of the QA session where your questions will be attended to. See you in the next class.